In this discussion, we will discuss the discussion question of Describe how flexible budgets can be used both before and after a period of activity. If we see a discussion question or essay question like this, our goal is to expand on this information. We would generally rather write more than less if the time provides in an essay question uh, writing more than less is more likely to touch on some items that could pick up points for us. If we'd write too much, then we usually do not lose points for that. Uh, so we'd rather write more than less. Discussion forum questions, usually we pick up points by just adding to the discussion as long as what we're adding is relevant. So we would typically want to find places to expand to it. Let's read this one more time. Describe how flexible budgets can be used both before and after a period of activity. So if we see something like this, first we want to probably describe what the flexible budget is. It doesn't ask us to do that uh, specifically, but that's one place we could start. We'd say, hey, what, what is a flexible budget? And then we could go into how it would be used before, how it would be used after. What are going to be the resources for the flexible budget? We could also compare and contrast a flexible budget to a static or fixed budget. So a flexible budget, as the name provides here, means it's going to be flexible, meaning we can flex the budget based on different production levels. And that's going to be one of the major tools, one of the major benefits that we have. We can compare and contrast the flexible budget to a static or fixed budget. A static or fixed budget typically being made on one production level. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunchy numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise so you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. In other words, often, oftentimes also, a fixed budget might be using a more of a standard type income statement type format for the income statement, one we would think of as a journal accepted accounting principle type format income statement that has sales, less cost of goods sold, selling administrative expenses. In other words, it's grouped by what the activities are, as opposed to the flexible budget, which is typically going to be grouping information by the, by the behavior of those things. That Therefore, we'll have sales minus the variable cost gives us the contribution margin minus the fixed costs. So the format of the flexible budget will be different, breaking that information out by behavior of the costs that allowing us to make the flexible budget flex meaning we can make a different budget for di different production levels now once we have that then we could say okay why would we use that before the the actual period and why might we use that after the period note that before the period starts we don't really know what's going to happen in terms of production level we're, we're just guessing on that with that we're budgeting for that we don't know how many units are going to be produced so uh, we might use a flexible budget beforehand so that we can do what if analysis. What if this amount was produced? What if a lower amount was produced? And then we can do analysis and make decisions and analysis. And I would typically think of it this way, right? We're, we're thinking about putting together usually a fixed budget, right? The master fixed budget possibly. But we might use a flexible budget for us to run scenarios before we get to that fixed budget. We're going to say, okay, what if this happens? What if that happens? using a flexible budget, then come up to what we think the number will be in terms of the production level, make a fixed budget based on that. That's what our map is going to be throughout the actual period. That's going to guide us through the period based on a fixed production level. And then after the period is over, we can then use the flexible budget type format again, the contribution margin type format again. How? Because at the end of the process, we will know how much was actually produced. And then we can make a comparison, not based on the fixed budget because it's got a different level of production and therefore the comparison won't be as useful. If we then use the flexible budget to, to flex to the actual level of production, 
we can take our budgeted numbers and our actual numbers comparing kind of apples to apples, same thing to the same thing. And the differences we'll have there then will be more meaningful for us to go into and make decisions on. We can then take those numbers, break them down further using various variance analysis if we so choose.